very bad. The second pick is equal to one because they are at the same time. Um, so here it's to compare with the experimental results. You can see that the experimental one, which is on the left, um, is has a KC that is one, and on the right it's equal to 2.5 for the critical region. For the quarter region, the KC is equal to seven on the left, and it's equal to 9.5 on the right. The ultimate KC corresponds between the experimental and the model. There are both 14. So to conclude this presentation, um, our average gain was 0.21 for our system. The quartile was two, the T0 was two, and we had a range that is reasonable between 2.5 and 14.3. Uh, the table on the right uh, shows the variation between the model and the experiment values. And the next assignment is going to be about the proportional integral controller experiment. Hello everybody, my name is Patrick Moss. Um, I'm in the ORCID group with, along with uh, Oleg Scottson and Nathan Hilton. And uh, I'm going to present an uh, absorber airflow system today, all the way up through week 12. A little bit of what we're going to go over today is uh, the system outline, um, some previous work that we've done in the past with a different system, including a steady state operating curve, step response. FOPDT and frequency response. I'm going to go over the, some model results that we uh, went over with the new system, um, which is our air absorber flow. Uh, and that, um, with that, we'll go over root locus and uh, proportional control. Then we'll go over the, some conclusions. This is our system, and uh, it's an air, it's a absorber airflow system, which is just an air pumping system. Um, an electric motor will utilize power. Uh, from a generator to pump in some air, and uh, the controller, the controller element there is uh, um, the air flow rate, and this is just a column that pumps the air. Right. This is our uh, SSOC steady state operating curve from our duct cooling system uh, before we got switched over to the absorber airflow. And uh, the goal of this experiment was to create a steady state of our output, which is just this green line right here. And as it flattens out, that means that it's going to steady state at around 56 degrees Celsius. And it took around 10 minutes to get to that um, step response system. Uh, we got a K value, which is our gain. Of 0.3, a tau of uh, about 30 seconds, our dead time of about 1.8 seconds. Then our FOPDT, which is uh, the first order plus dead time system or uh, experiment. Uh, this this uh, graph right here shows our model, which is in the green. And then our uh, actual results, which is in, of the input, we'll go over first, which is in blue. And as you can see, they're both dead even, um, which is 
what you would expect in an in experiment like this. Then the output in degrees Celsius uh, of our actual results is in the red, and then our model results is in the purple. And looking at the graph, they are pretty similar, um, which means that our model is pretty accurate. And on to our frequency response. This is also another model versus experimental uh, results, or graph right here. The model results are in the purple and the graph is in the green. And our uh, ultimate frequency we found to be 0 0.2 cycles per second. And on to our uh, most current experiments, root locus, which was um, on the absorber airflow system, or what we used as the absorber airflow system. Um, here we can see our uh, critical damping K value of zero, and that is uh, at, at zero degrees, and is also found to be zero. Our critical, uh, let's see, for the, well, that's also at zero uh, decay ratio, and then our one five hundredth decay ratio which is KC500 at 45 degrees was found to be 0.5. And this is in our lowest region, which is zero to 10 pounds per minute of uh, our system. And our one-tenth decay, we found to be 1.5, and that's KC10. And then our quarter, to quarter decay, we found to be 2.0. And our ultimate is that's actually supposed to be 3.0, not 2. Um, and that's at 90 degrees. And this is using a gain of 0.7, a tau of 2.5 seconds, and a dead time of 4.5 seconds. In our middle region, from 10 to 20 pounds per minute, we found the critical damping to be 0. We found our ultimate to be 4.6, and our quarter to get decay to be 2.9 our one-tenth decay to be 2.1, and our one-five-hundredth decay to be 0.8. And this was using a gain of 0.8, a tau of 5 seconds, and a dead time of 4 seconds. And on to the highest region, uh, which is 20 to 30 pounds per minute in the absorber airflow system, we found the critical damping to be zero, or at zero degrees to be zero, uh, the fi one five hundredth decay to be three point nine, the one tenth decay to be ten, and our quarter decay decay to be fourteen, and our ultimate to be twenty one. Which these uh, for the highest region, they seem if you'll notice, just looking at the ultimate, which this is supposed to be three. And that ultimate compared to this ultimate, 4.6, and this ultimate, which seems to be quite a bit higher than the other two. And on to our most current um, experiment, proportional only control. And this graph right here was using our lowest region from 0 to 10 pounds per minute. Uh, and we used a maximum reasonable KC value for these parameters, the parameters of K equals 0.7, tau equals 4.5, and uh, dead time is 2.5. We used a KC value of 6.6 percent pound per minute. And this is what we came up with. Uh, as you can see right here, these are pretty level, but it has a slight rise which means our decay ratio is slightly above one for this particular graph. And this system, or this uh, experiment was underdamped. Um, oscillatory, which just means it oscillates on and on. And from our data, we couldn't find a settling point, so we would suggest that it never settles. Um, and we could not find the offset.
And for, the, for these same given parameters, uh, our lowest reasonable KC value of 0.5 uh, percent per pound per minute, we found this to be overdamped. Um, and this is at 1 500th decay ratio. Uh, monotonic, which, mean, which means it never oscillates. Settling time of 20 seconds. And an error offset of 7.5, which is just from uh, the input to the top of our um, output range. <coughs> now, we'll move on to the highest region because uh, we didn't get results for the middle region as of yet. Um, for our maximum reasonable KC value, we found that, that to be 8.7% per pound per minute <coughs> using a gain of 0.5, a tau of 2.7, and a dead time of 1.6. We found this one to be underdamped, a decay ratio of 0.97, which is close to 1. It's as close as I could get it to 1 uh, without going over. Um, it doesn't settle as far as our data shows. It is oscillatory, and we cannot tell the offset since we cannot find the uh, uh, settling point. And on to the minimum reasonable K value of 0.5, as well as uh, it's the same, we use the same um, KC value as we did in the, the, uh, f uh, the lowest region. And let's see, we found this one to be overdamped. This is at 1 500th decay uh, ratio, and it's monotonic. The settling time uh, is around five seconds, and that's about right here where it starts to level off. And an offset of about eight, which just means from here to here. And some conclusions. Our average parameters uh, for the past few systems have, uh, we found an average gain to be about 0.6 an average time constant of about 3.3, um, and an average dead time of 3.4. Um, we'll use these parameters, not the average, but for each individual region for our proportional controller experiments. This is just a model. And then the, uh, uh, for the next assignment, our design 